Right, so for this question, we're going to be using F equals MA. Our F is made up of two forces. I'm going to be putting them in column vectors because I think it's easier to see for this question, but you don't have to. And M, it tells us, is 2, and we've got an acceleration of 1 minus 1. So this gives us two equations. So minus 2P, so essentially we're equating the I's and we're equating the J's. So minus 2P plus 4Q equals 2. 2Q minus 2P equals minus 2. I am going to rearrange the top one. So if I call that 1 and 2, I'm going to rewrite 1 as 4Q minus 2P equals 2. And I am going to, well, I could either take them away from each other or solve them simultaneously, essentially. So if I get my calculator, it's much easier to do in there. I'm going to go to equation function, simultaneous equations, number of unknowns, 2. That's going to be 2 minus 2 minus 2. And then I'm going to have 4 minus 2, 2. And that's going to tell me that Q equals 2 and P equals 3. So now what I'm going to do is I've got my P and my Q, which is the first bit. Now, you could have just taken them away from each other, solved it as you normally would. And then for part B, you're going to find the size of the angle between the direction of acceleration and the vector J. So if I sketch the acceleration, we've got 1 minus 1. So we've got it here. And the angle that we want is the vector J. So remember, this is I, this is J. And it says po it's positive J, so we're looking for this angle here. Okay. We know that this is 1 and 1, so we know this is 45. And then obviously we've got 90 here. So the size of the angle is going to be um, 90 plus 45, so 135 degrees. If you didn't remember that tan one is um, tan 45 is 1, you could have done tan alpha equals 1. So alpha is tan to the minus 1 of 1, which gives you the 45. Okay, so for part C. So for part C, we're told, so if we take at time t equals 0, we're given a velocity. So if I, and if we put that over here. Maybe not. Let's try again. Um, so we've got at time t equals zero, we're given a velocity and it's moving in the direction of a different vector. So let's put that here. We can see it properly. Right. So at time t equals zero, the velocity of p is 3 minus 4, so we're going to use v equals u plus at. So we know our u is 3 minus 4. We don't know what our t is, um, but we know our a is 1 minus 1. But we know our new v is in the direction, so it's some lambda, so it's some factor of 11 minus 13. So we're going to get 3 plus t equals 11 lambda, minus 4 minus t equals minus 13 lambda. We could add those together. That's going to give us minus 1, so 1 and 2. If we do 1 plus 2, we're going to get minus 1 equals minus 2 lambda, so lambda is a half. When we substitute that back in, we're going to get our t, so we'll get 3 plus t equals 11 over 2, so t must be 2.5. And there's your final question.